And welcome to Cooking with Nick, the cooking class that will show you how to prepare a quick and healthy four-course dinner in a short amount of time. There's nothing more important than eating dinner with your family as often as possible. With a little preparation and some quick tips from me, you will always have time to make dinner for your family. So if we're all ready to cook, let's get started on our meal for today. Okay, so what we're going to do tonight, I'm going to show you how to prepare this meal. In, uh, in those of you who have been here know the, the process. So I'm going to show you how to get this all done. Even though the class says it's an hour and a half, basically the whole meal takes about 40 minutes to prepare. So, uh, and I'm going to give you some hints on how to do that, okay, because you can't always go from beginning to end and expect to get there in 40 minutes. So you need to do a little bit of uh, prep work and get things done. So what we're going to have tonight, tonight's menu is uh, we're going to have stuffed meatballs. And I'll show you how to make those very quickly. 20 minutes, meatballs are in and they're done. It's also a basic meatball recipe that you could use if you don't want to make stuffed meatballs and you want to make regular meatballs. It's, it's the same recipe. Okay, so uh, we'll show you how to get that done. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to do an escarole and white bean soup. Okay, and I know people say, ooh, escarole, ooh, you know, but uh, try it. You'll like it. Escarole, if you don't put it with anything, is it, kind of bitter. But we're going to mix it with some beans and some garlic. And, and everybody gets to know each other because you're all going to smell like garlic by the time you get out of here tonight. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll do that. We're going to have a side dish of a pasta. Uh, and I'm going to be using whole grain pasta for that. Uh, <clears throat> a little healthier with a tomato basil cream sauce. Okay, let me show you how to make that. Very simple. It uh, has basil in it, cream, and tomatoes. That's basically what it is. But it's a little bit different than the regular kind of sauce, like a red sauce, you open the jar and throw it in there. So this is a little different. If you have company and you want it to be a little fancier, you know, you can do this. And I'll show you how to make that and add some things to it so you can make it into a full entree. Okay, we're going to have dessert. I am not a baker. I don't like to bake. I don't like to measure things. Uh, so uh, every time you come to this class and there's a recipe in there for a dessert, you know it takes three or five minutes. <laughs> So there you go. So, and it's good and quick and down and dirty. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start tonight with the soup. And this is the, what we're going to do. I'm going to get the soup going. Okay, I'll get that ready to go. Uh, while the soup is, is simmering, I'm going to show you how to make the meatballs. We're going to get those in the oven. Okay, then you will eat. You'll have the soup. Okay, so everybody has your soup. By the time the meatballs are cooked, I'll make the sauce for the pasta, get that going. You'll have meatballs and pasta, and then we'll make the dessert, and then everybody will have dessert. So everybody has to eat. So you will eat everything we make tonight. So, okay. Uh, you pay your $7 materials fee, that's your food. Okay, so I don't take anything back. So if it's left over, you take it home. Uh, so we're going to get ready. So what I'm going to do is get the big soup pot going. And I'm going to put this on about medium-high. And uh, I always go crazy with, with this, the stove here because in my house, the, the top burners are gas, but my oven's electric. Okay, so I have two different systems. And the knobs on this stove are different. So if you see me leaning like this and my hand starts burning, you know I put the wrong one on. So, uh, so I always have to check to make sure. Uh, a, couple of classes, a couple of classes ago, I put the, the menu down and, you know, the thing was on fire. But, you know, so it, it's very well unexpected stuff going on. So what I'm going to do is I got the heat under that, that pan a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil just in the bottom, just to coat the bottom. You don't want a lot because otherwise the soup will be oily. Okay, so just a couple of tablespoons. And people always ask me about olive oil. This is uh, extra virgin olive oil. I use it for everything. Okay, so I don't go out and spend $80 for a bottle of olive oil. I just use it. With, this was on sale at Tops. If you buy this little thing right here, either attached to the top is a 75 cent off coupon. Okay, and then I had to double, double the coupon, double thing. So you get it for about four dollars by the time you finish. So, so that's that. So I usually buy the olive oil that's on sale. So people always ask me about that. So I'm going to get some vegetables cut up because this is going to be the basis for our soup. And I have some pasta water going over here. 
and just take, I'm taking a regular yellow onion. Okay, I'm going to chop it up, but I'm not going to mince it. I'm going to chop it so it's, uh, you can see the pieces. Because when you eat the soup, you want to see what you're eating. You know, you know, you, know, you want to make sure that you can see the pieces of onion. So just give it a quick chop. People always ask me what my background is when I do this. Uh, my background's in education. I have, I have uh, two master's degrees and a doctorate in education. So uh, my wife's always teasing me. She goes, you have $40,000 for a doctorate. Now you're cooking. You know, so she, she always calls me D Dr. Cook. You know, so, uh, but uh, I didn't go to culinary school. You know, my wife and I used to own the Stockton Hotel for a while. So we ran that. Uh, I did catering for the old corner deli for a while, but, you know, so, you know, I did a lot of things. I always liked cooking. I have a large family. I'm next to the youngest of seven. Uh, my wife is the oldest of nine. So, uh, so we both had large families. Uh, in our household, uh, my wife's an excellent cook, but she chooses not to, you know, so uh, she likes to clean. So I said, have a ball, you know. <laughs> you know, go ahead. So I, so I do all the cooking. She does all the cleaning. So, uh, but, but she is a good cook. So, okay, I'm chopping up uh, some celery. Okay, just remember when you're, when you're cooking, you, your hand's like a little claw. You know, so you bend it in the knife. You hold it at a little bit of an angle. So when you're going, you don't cut your fingers off like this. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if I, you, you heard this story before, but... Uh, I was teaching a class, and it was right around Halloween. I should, I should do it to you. I shouldn't tell you about it. Uh, I was doing it. It was right around Halloween. It was like the day before Halloween. I had a class, and it was in here. So I, uh, I was chopping away. and I, You know those little rubber fingers that the kids put on at Halloween? They come, so so <laughs> I, had, I had it on, and I was, I was cooking. And I went like this, and I went, oh, God! <laughs> and the finger came off, you know? And it was, yeah. And, and like somebody was running for 911, they were calling. I had to like stop in mid break, you know. I was like, I said, no, I'm just kidding, it's just kidding, <laughs> you know. So I haven't done that since because people got upset, but it was kind of fun. Okay, I have two carrots that I'm going to chop up, and this is basically, uh, you know, you just got to watch this a little bit, so it doesn't. You don't want the whole thing burning. Lower that a little bit. I'm just going to chop up the carrots in, uh, I'm quartering them, basically what I'm doing. It depends on how big your carrots are. If the carrots are small, just, just cut them in half and, and go for it. Okay, and the soup's going to simmer for a while. So what we want to do is just get a little bit of caramelization on these. And when I say caramelization, I mean you put it in there and, and let the oil cook it a little bit and then it'll start to turn brown, okay? So it gives it just a little bit of color, and it brings out the flavor. The, onion, the carrots are very sweet. Carrots have a lot of sugar in them. So uh, they, they'll give it a little sweetness to it. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, cooks will put carrots finely minced in, like, tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, and it just gives it a sweet little flavor. Okay, so throw those in. This is a very quick soup. Okay. What I have in this jar is a combination of salt and pepper. Uh, if you've been here before, you know every recipe you read says add salt and pepper. So I always put it together, okay? So then when you throw it in, you don't have to worry about it. Just add salt and pepper, okay? So, and I really don't cook with a whole lot of salt, so just put a little bit in. And that's to your taste. After you make the soup, you taste it, and you see how it is. Okay, I have some garlic. And what I do when I, when I get garlic home, uh, I take the cloves apart and just put it in a bag like this or put it in a little dish uh, because I don't like to, to mess around with the garlic. I don't like, you know, the little paper stuff flying all over, it sticks to your knife and everything else. So I take it apart and get most of that off. So what you want to do with the garlic is just put the flat, you, you know, put the garlic against the flat part of your knife and just give it a whack. And all of the peel comes right off, okay? That's the easy way to do it. And I'm just going to chop that up. Take off that little piece on the end. Uh, if, you, if you have people who like the, the taste of garlic, but they don't like the garlic, what you can do is at this point, uh, 
peel the garlic, put the garlic cloves in there, whole, okay? Swish them around, let them get a little bit of caramelization on them, and then take it out, okay? You'll have the garlic flavor, but not the garlic. Some people can't digest garlic and they get agita, you know, so, so you, that's Italian for heartburn, you know, so, you know, so, yeah, so, uh, so they just take it out. You know, but you still, you can do that with any kind of dish you make. If you make any kind of like piccata dish or anything that has garlic in it, you want the flavor, take it out. Or if you just want to infuse the oil, take, uh, take your oil, put it in a cold pan, put the whole cloves of garlic in the pan, and then bring it slowly up to heat, up to temperature. Then, then when it, it comes to a, a, you know, little bubbles in it, just let it sit, let it cool down, then take the garlic cloves out, and then you have infused garlic, I mean infused oil. Okay, so you have that garlic taste. Okay, so we got that nicely caramelized. So what I'm going to do is I have a can of uh, Wegmans low sodium chicken stock. Uh, if you have your own chicken stock, if you make it, uh, you know you can use that. But uh, you know, I ha I, sometimes I I have it, but sometimes I forget to take it out of the freezer. <laughs> you know, so it's like when you have those shopping bags. You know, you're supposed to bring them in the store. I always have them in the back seat, and I always forget them. So. Uh, so I'm going to use canned stock. So just throw that in. Now we're going to let this come up. Okay, when I use the, the canned stock, I always add a little water to it because I always find that it's, uh, you know, even though it says low sodium, it's salty. You know, so, so I'm going to put about a half a can. A half a can of uh, stock in there. Okay. So we have just about everything in there. I'm going to add some crushed red pepper flakes. Okay. You could add this either at the at the, at the end after you put the broth in, or you could put it in with the vegetables and let it let it infuse in the oil. If you put it in with the vegetables, uh, it, it gets hotter. Okay, because that oil will infuse and pull out all of that. So if you put a little, little bit of it in at the end, it's not as hot. Does anybody not like, does anybody have an aversion to hot pepper? No, it's too bad. <laughs> so, yeah. so we put that in. It just gives it a little bit of a kick. Okay, so we get that in there. Now, I, the escarole I'm going to use is uh, right in the bag. You buy it already chopped and washed. Or, uh, and it's not much more expensive than buying the whole escarole and cutting it and, you know, going through all that mess. So basically what I'm going to do is just get this in here. And we're going to put it in and let it, let it cook in here. Okay. So it's, it's kind of like spinach. It'll wilt down. But escarole kind of like maintains its shape a little bit more than spinach. It won't get real mushy. Okay. Just going to put that in. And this is basically all that the soup is. Then we're going to add the beans, and you're basically done. So, so this is a, a really healthy soup. You, you get a nice big loaf of Italian bread and, you know, soak up the juice and everything, and you really have a one-pot meal. I mean, it's really good. This is something we used to have in my house, usually on Friday, because, you know, we grew up very uh, strict Catholics, and you couldn't eat meat on Friday, and so we would always have this kind of a soup or... Uh, some kind of spaghetti with uh, oil and anchovies. And but, so we got this going. Okay. And I'm going to wait to add the beans. And we're just going to let that simmer down. We're just going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to put the lid on it. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just going to add a little bit more salt on top of this. Because when you put the salt in, what the salt does is draws the moisture out. It'll, it'll draw the moisture out and help it uh, cook a little bit faster. Okay. Okay, so we'll let that go. The beans I'm going to use are just white, white beans. Okay, you can use cannellini beans or whatever kind of beans you want to use. Uh, these I'm going to uh, just drain off some of that, uh, 
you know, when you open the beans, it's got that little gooey stuff in there. So, and I find that very, very salty. So I'm going to drain it a little bit. And what we're going to do at the end, before you guys uh, dig into the soup, is we're going to top it, because I always like to add a little bit of freshness to it. So what we're going to do, we're going to top it with uh, a little bit of uh, lemon zest and a little bit of lemon juice. And then put some Parmesan cheese on top of the soup. It's really delicious, so that'll be good. Okay, so while that's going, I'm going to start working on the meatballs. What I do when I stack my bowls, uh, I put a paper towel in between. Uh, and it, it also helps keep it a little bit cleaner, but I also have a paper towel to wipe my hands on as I'm, as I'm cooking. So I'm going to start working on the meatballs. Okay. Get that out of here. So this meatball mixture is basically the same if you were making regular meatballs. Okay, so, uh, but we're going to stuff them. And I'm going to stuff them with uh, bocconcini, which are a little mozzarella balls. It's fresh mozzarella, and they look like this. Okay, it doesn't look like that rubbery stuff you you find in the regular grocery store, but you can get this at like a salad bar or whatever. So they're little mozzarella balls. That's what they are. Uh, if you if you want to make this and you don't have those, because those could be a little pricey if you're making a lot of them. So what you can do is take cheese sticks mozzarella cheese sticks, and just cut them into little pieces and use that to stuff the meatballs. Okay? So that's another alternative. Usually people usually have, you know, mozzarella cheese sticks in, you know, in the refrigerator or especially if you have kids at home. Okay? So I'm going to start with ground beef. You can use ground beef or you could use meatloaf mix. Okay? If you want a meatloaf mix, meatloaf mix is a combination of beef, pork, and veal. Okay, and you can find that in the regular grocery store, right, where the, the ground beef is. Okay, but I'm, this is just ground beef. Okay, I'll just break that up a little bit. Okay, so we have, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Not a lot, because I'm going to add Parmesan cheese to this. And Parmesan cheese is salty. Okay. I'm going to add, this is a cup of breadcrumbs, and these are seasoned breadcrumbs I'm using. You could use regular breadcrumbs, fresh breadcrumbs, whatever you have available. Okay. I always have uh, the regular breadcrumbs, you know, sitting in the refrigerator. I mean, sitting in the cupboard. You know. Okay, a little bit of red pepper flakes. I put red pepper flakes in everything, so, you know. Yeah, it keeps you, keeps you young, makes you sweat. You know, a little bit of parsley flakes. And you can use fresh parsley if you happen to have it. I just ended up ripping all the, the parsley out of, my, out of the pots I had because it's supposed to snow tonight. So, Okay, and here I have two eggs. You know, and I ha they have to travel, so i got to wrap them. You know, so. <laughs> Let me crack those in there. I always like those people who can crack the eggs with one hand, you know, like, I, I, I try that and it's just like, my hand goes the wrong way, you know, it's like, so, uh, kind of fun. Okay, so we got that in. I'm going to put, uh, let's see, get that mixed up a little bit. I'm going to put some garlic in here. I'm going to put two cloves of garlic. And I'm going to use the garlic, uh, the garlic press for this. I usually don't use these gadgets, but I like the garlic to be pretty well minced. So put that in there. One more. And if you're using the garlic press, you don't have to peel it. Just, just put it right in there, and it'll take the peel off. The part I don't like about using the garlic press is it takes me more time to clean it than to use it. So we'll take care of that. So we got the garlic in there. I'm going to add a little bit of milk. I'm going to add about a half a cup of milk. And basically what the milk does is give it a little moisture because you have all the breadcrumbs in there. Okay. 
And I'm going to put some Parmesan cheese in here. And probably about, I don't know, what does it say on the recipe? Half a cup? Cup? Yeah. I, I, this is the part where I don't measure. I'm just going to throw it in here. Okay. I like a lot of cheese. So we have everything in here. And again, this is your basic recipe. Get that, and let me drain these a little bit. You're going to see I'm only going to be making 12 of these. I have some more in the oven over here, so you don't have to beat each other up to get over these meatballs. So, uh, hmm? Oh, the onions. See, I told you, you have to watch me. I knew I had that onion over here somewhere. And I'm going to, I'm going to grate the onion. I just sharpened this knife, so I'm, I'm trying to be really careful. <laughs> just going to peel that off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grate it. Okay, so uh, I got this little thing when quality went out of sale. I got it for a buck. It's kind of neat. So uh, it just has the two things on it, but it's fold. When I travel, I can take it. And I'm just going to put it right in here. And and the reason I'm grating it is because you, get, you won't get big chunks of onion in there when you eat it. Plus, you get all the juice from the onion, so you get a nice little onion flavor in it. Okay. Get that in there. Make sure you get it off the back. There you go. Okay. I'm just going to use the best tools we have. Let me see what our soup's doing there. Soup is boiling. Can you see it up there? It's going nicely. Lower that a little bit. Now I'm going to add the beans. Just going to drain off some of that syrupy stuff. And, it, you know, you could add... Uh, like uh, cannellini beans, pinto beans, whatever kind of beans you want. Uh, I like these uh, northern beans because they're a little bit smaller than the cannellini beans. The cannellini beans are very, very creamy, but they're a little bit bigger. And uh, what happens in the soup, if, if you like have it for the next day or whatever, they tend to get, they tend to fall apart. So I like using these small ones. Okay. Okay, make sure you get them off the bottom. Okay. That soup's just about ready to go. Okay, I do have a towel here, and I wiped it on my shirt. Okay, so I know. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need somebody to taste test. See if there's enough salt in here. Somebody. Not a pick. Just dip it in there to see if it needs any seasoning. That's what you have to do. You have to wait to the end. You season all the way through as you're cooking, but then when you get to the end, you, you taste it again. Okay, remember, we're going to add some Parmesan cheese in there, too, so. It's fine for me. Okay? Okay. Well, then it's great for everybody. Too bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> nobody else wanted to taste it, so too bad. Okay, so we got the meatballs mixture here. What I'm going to do is just get in there and start mushing it all together. Okay, I like watching some of those TV shows where they mix it with a spoon. How can you do that? I mean, they have people in the background mixing it for them. They can't do that with a spoon. That's like some of those shows. You know how many people are backstage for Emerald Lagasse's show? Helping him cook 133 people he has on his staff. <laughs> I know. So it all looks so nice. You know, the thing that drives me crazy with those shows is their stoves are always so clean. You know, they, they must have put like new racks in that oven every time they open that oven. Okay, so we got that pretty well mixed up. Got that down. Now, what you want to do to get a good size, ooh, that onion, uh, for the, the meatballs, I use an ice cream scoop. Okay, so, and, and what I tend to do is give it a, 
good scoop. I'll put it on the tray. And then, and then I'll shape them after, because then I'll, you'll, you'll get approximately the same size for all of them. Okay. If I'm making meatballs for, uh, like, like for spaghetti and meatballs, a pasta, I usually make them, uh, I, I level it, because I don't like big meatballs, okay? When my wife and I were first dating and she decided she was going to make spaghetti and meatballs, I mean, I, I told you she's the oldest of nine kids. So when they made meatballs in their house, it was like a mini meatloaf. You know, it was like, so <laughs> we went there for dinner and it was like spaghetti and a meatball. It was like, this is big. So I always tease her about that. So she, <laughs> she goes, well, that's the way we make them. I said, okay. But, okay, so we got, I'm going to get 12 of these going here. So, okay, just a little bit left in there. I'll do that later. What we want to do now is take, take the meatballs, roll them in your hand, and get them going so they're nice and, you know, you want to pack it a little bit. And take your thumb, put a hole in it, okay? Take one of the bocconcini or your mozzarella and whatever, pop it in there, and then pull the meat over it so you close it up like a little packet. And then get it rolling, okay? In the meantime, I have the oven on 400 degrees. So that's what we're going to bake them in, okay? And we're going to put them in there for 20 minutes, okay? And that's, that's all it's going to take. So if you make the meatballs a little bit smaller, you know, uh, then it's going to take about 15 minutes. Uh, try to get it uh, uh, sealed. I don't, I don't care how, how tight you get it sealed. Some of the cheese is going to leak out a little bit. But that just makes it, uh, you know, a little more interesting for your guests. Also, if you're making meatballs and you, you like to put them in your, your gravy, your sauce, so when you cook them for 15 minutes, they get a nice little color on them, and then you put them in the sauce and they cook the rest of the way, so, so you don't have to worry about, about them being not cooked. Okay, put those in there. Soup smells good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these finished, uh, and then you guys are gonna have some soup. And I'll get these in the oven and then start working on our entree or pasta side. You know what I'm going to add to that soup? See, somebody's not watching that recipe. I didn't put the, detail, the pasta in there. Okay. Joy, are you reading or are you sleeping? You're supposed to be watching it. Uh, this is ditalini. These are little pasta. You can use like little shells or whatever kind of pasta you want. Now again, what I, did, what I do with my pasta is I pre-cook it. Okay? Pasta will stay in your refrigerator cooked for four or five days. Okay? I, you cook it about three to four minutes less than it says on the package. Okay? Uh, run some cold water over it so you stop the cooking. Put it in a, a baggie. You know, pop it in your refrigerator. So if you have time, like on a Sunday afternoon, you, you know, you're watching some, a game or whatever, or Dancing with the Stars or whatever you're watching, uh, you know, put the pasta on, let it sit in there, and then when you go to, to use it, get your water up to boil, and then just put the pasta in, and in three minutes, you're done. Okay, so you, you save yourself a lot of time that way. If you're going to make lasagna, pre-cook the noodles, okay, if you, if you do it that way. Cook the noodles, lay them on wax paper, Okay, put them in your refrigerator. Then when you go to make the lasagna, the longest thing is cooking the noodles. <laughs> you know, so the noodles are all cooked, and then you just mix your cheese and your meat, and you layer it, and you're all set to go. So I'm going to put the pasta in here, and again, this is going to make it a nice hearty meal. Okay? And again, this is pre-cooked, so all we're going to do is, is uh, let it come up to a boil. You could use little, small shells. You could use you know, whatever you have. Okay, we'll let that come back up to temperature, and then you guys are going to eat. In the meantime, I'll finish making our meatballs, get those in the oven. Okay. This is something you could make way ahead of time. Uh, you could make these meatballs and get to this point right here uh, and freeze them. Okay, then when you're ready to cook them, just take them out of your freezer, 
I'll let them defrost, and then just, uh, you know, serve them up. What you can do also is make the mixture. If you don't want to make the meatballs at that time, make the mixture and then freeze the whole mixture. And then take them out and just make the little meatballs and you're all set to go. So. This bocaccini, the, the fresh mozzarella tastes a lot different than uh, if you buy the packaged stuff in the store. The packaged stuff is kind of rubbery. But uh, if you buy fresh mozzarella, that it's usually in water when you see it. It's very creamy. So it's, it's got a, a totally different texture. Okay. Three more to go. What I did with the pasta for the, the entree, with the, the, what we're going to do with the uh, basil cream sauce is the same thing. I pre-cooked that pasta and I'm going to use uh, whole grain penne. Uh, and that's, so, so we'll have that ready to go. And the sauce takes about two minutes to make. You'd be, you'd be surprised at that sauce, how quick it makes. And then when the next time you go to an Italian restaurant and they charge you $18 for that sauce, you'll, you'll sit there like I do and go, excuse me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find out some of those things. So my wife says, can't you just go out and eat? I mean, do you have to analyze everything? You know, but... You know, it is, it's hard because, we, we, you know, we own the restaurant, too. So when you own the restaurant, you know what these people are paying for this stuff and what they're charging you. <laughs> okay, here's our last one. Okay, what I'm going to do with these is if you have a, a spray, uh, you could spray them with a little bit of, you know, olive oil spray or whatever. But I'm just going to put a little bit of drizzle, a little bit of olive oil over the top just to... Give them a little crusty coat, okay? You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But. Okay, these are going in. Okay, soup is getting ready. Clean up a little bit. You always have to make sure you, I, I, I always have to clean while I'm cooking, you know, sometimes you go into people's houses and, you know, they go, make sure my kitchen's clean. You know, it's usually cleaner than before I went in. So, so we get that going. And then it's always easier to clean as you go anyway. Okay, so we're all set. So we have the soup is done. Meatballs are in the oven. Okay. The side dish we're going to make is the pasta with tomato basil. And what I do is I have pasta water going here in this pasta pot. heavy cream. And, and what I did again, this is a, about a pound of uh, uh, penne pasta. Now this is, this is penne regate. Okay, if you see regate on this, the box, okay, that means it has little ridges in it. Okay, you'll see some penne is plain and some have ridges. That's the regate. And I like to use the regate because it holds the sauce. Okay, because we're going to use a cream sauce. You know, I wanted to use uh, a penne because the sauce gets in it. You know, it gets all around it. So you want to use a noodle that has like a little hole in it. You know, we always have this argument in our house because my wife says, it's, it's, oh, it's pasta. It tastes the same. I said, no, it doesn't. And she goes, yes, it does. I said, so, you know, we always have that argument. But, uh, okay, our soup is ready. Okay, so before I get that started, I'm going to have you guys eat. Okay, so you'll have your soup. Uh, we have to do it a little bit differently this time. Usually we have it set up over there, but, you know, we have the camera here. So I'm going to set up over here. And, and this is the time when you guys have to get up, you know, because I'm not serving you. You know, I cook for you, but I'm not serving you. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to move over here. Okay, here's the soup. Here's the ladle. And I'm going to put the Parmesan cheese over there. So if you want to sprinkle it on top, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to zest some lemon in there. Okay, on top of the soup, give it a nice little fresh flavor. 
I have a, a microplane. Uh, if you don't have one of these, these are great tools. Uh, it's great for zesting. If you want to, after this, you could put in the, uh, the juice from the lemon. You don't have to because the zest is pretty, uh, pretty potent. Okay. okay, so we got that in there. Okay, just remember if you're going to zest, you zest it before you cut it. You know, I've had some classes where people, they cut the lemon, juice it, and then they try to zest it, and they, they're going, this thing won't zest. I'm going, well, okay. So uh, there's a reason for that. Okay, so we're all set. Okay, everybody up and eat. Okay, what I'm going to do now is we're going to go on to, we have the meatballs in the oven. Everybody had their soup. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to do pasta with the tomato, basil, and cream sauce. So what I do is I have, this is uh, penne pasta that's par-cooked. Okay, I have a pot of water here going. We're going to get this in. By the time this comes up and it's cooked, our sauce will be ready to go. So we should be all set. I could smell the meatballs. Can you smell the meatballs in the oven? Okay. Okay, so we got that going. Let that cook. And we're going to go on to our sauce. Okay. Basically what this sauce is, is very simple. I have a can of crushed tomatoes with uh, herbs, with Italian herbs in it. I'm going to pop that into the pan. Okay. I'm going to let that come up to temperature a little bit. And check the meatballs while I'm here. I have meatballs in two ovens, so... Is it good? Got a couple minutes on those. Okay, so what we're going to do, we add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. Not too much, just enough to give it some flavor. Okay, I'm going to add my buddy, crushed red pepper flakes. Give it a little kick so you guys have enough energy to get home. Okay, give that a stir. Okay, that's starting to come up to temperature. It's starting to boil a little bit. And I'm going to add pesto. Now, you can use either store-bought pesto or make your own pesto, uh, whatever you want to do. Let me take that off a little bit. This is about a cup. Pesto is the easiest thing in the world to make. You just put basil in your food processor. It's basil, uh, pine nuts, so I usually use walnuts. Okay, garlic, Parmesan cheese, olive oil. That's it. And it freezes very well. If you have a lot of basil in your yard and you make it during the summer, uh, what I always tell people to do is to put it in an ice cube tray, okay, and freeze it. And when they freeze, take them out, put them in a big plastic baggie, leave them in your freezer. Okay, when you want to use it, cook your pasta, pop out one little cube, because one little cube would be one serving. It usually comes to about one serving. Okay, take the cubes out, put them in the bottom of the bowl, put your hot pasta right on top of it, it'll melt it, and then you let it sit for about two minutes, and the, the pesto will melt. Just stir it up, and you're ready to go for dinner. Okay, so take you about two minutes to make dinner. So, okay, so I'm going to put this in. I'm going to put the pesto right in with the, the crushed tomatoes. Give that a little bit of a stir, and that's going to give it a nice, nice basil-y taste. Okay. Let that come up to temperature a little bit. And what we're going to add to this now is we're going to add some cream. Okay. If you go to a restaurant and you order a vodka sauce, do you ever get like spaghetti or pasta with vodka sauce? It's basically your spaghetti sauce, uh, like a half a cup of vodka, and about a half a cup of cream. So you could make that at home. Okay. That's all it is. So, and they, they charge you a fortune for that. So, but that's all that it is. That's, that's what they do. They take their regular sauce, they add a little vodka, and they add cream to it, and then throw it on the pasta. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> Another one of my pet peeves. Okay, so I'm going to add some cream to that. 
And you got to be careful with the cream because you don't want to bring it to a full boil with the cream because it, it might curdle, you know. So just let, the, let this sauce get nice and hot and then add the cream at the end and let it just come up to temperature. Because remember the pasta is going to be hot too, so we're going to mix it together. Okay, I have here, I have some uh, fresh basil that we're going to sprinkle on the top just to give it some extra flavor. So just pop off the leaves. Uh, you know, take your basil. What I usually do is put it in a, a towel and just wrap it up and leave it in the baggie in the refrigerator. And, and that's what you can do with all of your herbs. Okay, and they'll, they'll keep for a while. Basil is tough to keep, though. It turns black, you know, if it gets damp. So, and sometimes, you know, after the season, this time of the year, it's kind of hard to find fresh basil. And if you find it, it's pretty expensive. So I'm just going to rough chop it and just have it ready to sprinkle on the top. I always try to do that uh, chiffonade, you know, where they layer all the leaves like you see them and then they roll it. Mm -hmm. I, I can never get them to layer and I can never get them to roll. So I just chop it. <laughs> you know, it's like when they make salad dressing and they, they add the oil and they whisk, 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 whisk. I just put everything in a jar and shake it. it comes out the same. You know, you stand there and whisk that stupid thing. Get out of here. <laughs> so. so I always put it in a jar and I'm going whisk, 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 whisk. Okay, I'm done. You know, so. Okay, so we got some fresh basil there. Get our pasta bowl ready. Okay, so that's up to temperature now. I'm going to add some cream, probably maybe about a cup, just to give it a nice little pink taste. A pink taste, pink color, sorry. <laughs> now you could make the sauce ahead of time and just, uh, you know, stick in your refrigerator. It'll keep in your refrigerator as long as you keep any other sauce. So as long as you keep it cold. Okay. And that's done. So there you go. Sauce is done. Pasta is just about done. Take that out. If you don't have one of these pots, you need to get one. They're great. You know, has the strainer built in. And I'm going to put this right into the pot. Just give it a nice little stir. Because what's going to happen, the, the penne has all those little holes in it, so all that little sauce is going to soak right in there. And when you, when you guys eat this, you can sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on it, okay? Uh, I smell the meatballs. Let me take those out. There you go. That's what they look like. You see we have a couple like little lava overflows. That's, that's what's going to happen, so don't worry about it. Okay. There's part two. Those are the ones I made those this afternoon. Just so we would have enough for everybody to eat. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. Uh, we'll bring it back over there. I'll take the soup out. We'll set it up over there. Uh, and then you guys can just get up, help yourselves, and you're all set. Okay. Pop this into a bowl. Sprinkle this on top. It's basil. You could smell as soon as that basil hits that hot pasta. Boy, it has a nice smell. Okay, I'll put this over here. I'll put the two trays of meatballs over there and you can just help yourself. Just be careful because they're hot. And 
Nuisance. Nice stringy cheese. Okay. This over here. Some big plates. Here's forks. Get up. I'm going to put these on this other burner, so those are the extra ones there. So go for it. And I'm going to get ready for dessert. My favorite part, that's the only time you'll see me eat, is when we have dessert. I um, hope you guys all like that. I guess you did. But there's still some more meatballs left over there, so those are going to have to go. Okay, otherwise I'm going to throw them at you on the way out. So, uh, okay, this dessert we're going to make, what I did uh, while you guys were eating is I had pound cake, I sliced it up, and I have it on some plates over there. That's going to be the basis for what we're going to use. You could use sponge cake, you could use whatever kind of cake you want. But basically what we're going to make, we're going to make a ricotta cream, uh, a chocolate almond ricotta cream, and everything goes in the food processor. Okay, so I have uh, some ricotta cheese. This is whole milk ricotta cheese. If you wanted to use skim ricotta cheese, you can, but it kind of defeats the purpose of Look at the rest of the stuff you're eating, and you're going to have, you know, but that's up to you. I, I usually don't use low-fat stuff. I just eat less of it, you know. So, uh, I mean, that's my motto. I know some people like to use the low-fat stuff, but I, I, this stuff is creamier. So I'm going to put in, oh, maybe about a pound, which would be about half of this container, maybe just a little bit more. Okay, what we're going to do is basically cream this. Okay, I'm going to put in... Uh, some almond extract, which I just bought on the way over here. So I sting off. I'm going to put in a little bit of that. This is pure almond extract, so you got to be careful with that. If you don't have almond extract and you have amaretto at home, you could just throw in some amaretto. Or, or if you don't like almond, just don't put it in. Put vanilla in. Okay. Going to add a little bit of cream just so it, it mixes up well. And again, this is heavy cream, you know, the real stuff. So, uh, you know, just use less of it, that's all. I'm going to put a little bit of cinnamon in here. Okay. And some uh, cocoa powder. That's going to give it the, the chocolatey taste. And that is basically everything that goes in there. Uh, I know in the recipe it says you can use lady fingers. You can use lady fingers on the bottom if you want to do that. If you wanted to make it fancy, you can get a, like a goblet, put four lady fingers in it or three, depending on if you like the company or not. You know, just <laughs> you know, put as many as you want, and then just glop the the cream in that, and you have a nice little fancy dish. Because we're going to top it with some slivered almonds and some uh, Cool Whip. Okay, a trick with like uh, package whip topping. Cool Whip or whatever you want to buy. If you want it to not taste like it's Cool Whip, like you know, you want people to think you whipped it up, just you know, like grate some uh, lemon rind in there, lemon zest, a little bit of lemon juice, or you could put some vanilla in it, or any kind of flavoring in there, and just mix it up, and then it doesn't taste like it's Cool Whip. But uh, so, let's see. I'm going to put a little bit of powdered sugar in here. Powdered sugar depends on how sweet you like it, so we'll mix it up, and then we'll, we'll, we'll taste test it. Okay, it's a little, I'm going to add a little bit more cream because, you know, it's a little, a little thick. You have to, you know, try it as you go along. Scrape down the sides a little bit. And, and the, the ricotta cheese just creams so nicely. OK. 
Okay? We have to give it a taste test. <laughs> I know what it tastes like. <laughs> Need anything? Perfect. Perfect? Okay, good. That's it. You put it on some, take it off, put it on some pound cake. We're going to tap it with some cream, and we're all set to go. Okay, I'm going to have to move over here. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to take this. I'm going to just give it a good wallop on top. And this makes a lot. That pound, uh, you know, makes a lot of stuff. But this, again, this will keep in your refrigerator. Uh, this will also freeze. You could freeze ricotta cheese. You could freeze it. Or you could just sit in front of the TV and eat it all. You know, that's, that's what I would do. <laughs> If you wanted it to be darker, this is kind of like a little mocha taste. If you wanted it to be mocha, just add a little bit of instant coffee granules to it, and you'll make it, it'll be chocolate mocha, okay? Chocolate mocha almond, like you get at uh, a latte. Okay, that's done. I'm going to pop some cream on top of that, and then you guys can eat. Sprinkle some almonds on it. And you could use whatever kind of nut you want. I just like almonds are already in the, the thing. Does anybody not want cream on it? I didn't think so. <laughs> I could tell by the crowd. <laughs> you know, if you wanted to you whip your own cream, that's fine. If you wanted to get one of those little spray cans, you just spray it on there. Okay, I'm gonna put some, can anybody, is anybody okay, everybody okay with nuts on there? Okay, nobody, nobody's going to swell up. On. Okay. We're ready to go. You guys can come up and have dessert. Got to get you out of here by 8 o'clock. Now, there was a dessert took like two minutes, you know. If you wanted to and you had some chocolate syrup and you wanted to drizzle that over the top, you can do that. You can dress it up. If you have to have a vegetable, just put a little bit of mint in there, you know. <laughs> yeah, sprig of mint. You're all set. Okay, everybody enjoy. Uh, I hope everybody. I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, you look like you did. <laughs> Food's going home. There is still two more containers of soup up here that need to go home. Uh, unfortunately, there's no dessert left because everybody ate it. So, uh, but you can go home and make this because that was really easy. So I just want to thank you all for coming and braving the, the nasty weather outside and finding parking spaces with the games going on. And uh, I think I'm going to see some of you next week. Mm -hmm. So, okay, good. We're going to do uh, a different kind of, we're going to do chicken Caesar next week. So a different kind of uh, meal. Um, again, I want you to look at the clock. It's exactly 8 o'clock. Uh, we got through, if you looked at, take out all the time we had eating and my talking, okay? Basically, the meal was down to 40 minutes. So, uh, so you can do this at home. So, thank you. Well, that was our cooking plan for today. I hope those of you in class enjoy eating the meal prepared, learned a few new cooking shortcuts, and will try these recipes at home. To so those of you watching at home, I'd like to thank you for being with us and encourage you to join us in class. And remember, from my family to yours, always make time for family and friends by sharing a great meal around your kitchen table.